You didn't ask for this, you didn't volunteer, but you're in a Mayday situation, so let's deal with it. Welcome to Boat Training Online. I'm Sean Pollard, and today we're going to tear apart a Mayday call. Now, there's a couple different roads that I could go down on this subject, but since we haven't talked about it yet on this channel, I think the most appropriate approach is going to be the big picture approach. I think we need to identify what a Mayday is and what it isn't. I think we need to talk about what's going on with you, what the Rescue Coordination Center is doing, what your first responders are going to do, and then we'll wrap it up with, um, with your Good Samaritans. Let's talk about what a Mayday is. A Mayday is grave or eminent danger to a vessel, her crew, or both. What would be some examples of that? Well, first off, fire, sinking, a man overboard where you can't find the individual, and then your medical emergencies, which would include a heart attack, a stroke, maybe anaphylactic shock, uh, uncontrolled bleeding, in, in anything that falls into the category of grave or imminent danger. All right, so the purpose of this video is not to discourage you from seeking help if you need it. By all means, if you need help, get it. Oftentimes people wait too long. I don't want you to do that. We're just trying to define what a mayday is and what it isn't. So let's talk about what it's not. Your boat won't start. You're out of fuel. Your battery's dead. You're becalmed. Maybe you've been demasted or aground. And th these are just some some situations where people are these people going to need assistance? Absolutely. But are they in grave or imminent danger? No. Okay, so now let's talk about you. When you got dressed this morning and you got your boat ready to go, you got your family or your friends on there, you never thought for a million years that you would be in a mayday situation. So, there, there's going to be a big heavy dose of denial going on. And like I said, you've got some of the most important people on the planet to you are on this boat and they are in imminent grave or imminent danger. So there's going to be some stress. So you're going to have some stress and you're going to have some uh, denial. And I'm not a psychologist, but I'm sure there's a couple other things going on there. So my advice to you is acknowledge it. Know that it's going to happen before it happens and then snap out of it. You got some work to do here. We got, we got some things to do to get you rescued, okay? We've done our couple breaths. We've got our proverbial stuff together here and we grabbed the mic for the radio. Now I'm not, this video is a big picture video. I'm not gonna go into all the electronic doodads and, and so on and so forth. We're gonna talk about a mayday call. So you grab your mic one inch away from your mouth and calm down. Screaming into the mic or crying or any of this stuff is, is not going to help anybody. So, mayday, mayday, mayday. This is the motor vessel, Smiling Irishman, in position. We're going to stop right there. If I get any point across to you in this video, your position is the most important piece of information that can come off your boat. It's number one and nothing else. Not, everything else pales in comparison. If your engine room is flooding and your batteries are getting ready to go under and you can only get one piece of information off the boat, it's your position. If your boat's on fire and all the wires are melting, one piece of information, it's your position. A couple years ago, I listened to this, this Mayday, husband and wife team, and um, he went down hard. I don't know if he had a heart attack or exactly what, 
but she got on the radio and she was screaming and crying and wanting to know she wanted help and she didn't know why nobody was coming and this and that but she she didn't know how to give her position she didn't know what where she was um, and it ripped all of our hearts out I'm, uh, we're sitting here just helpless we can't do anything uh, the Coast Guard was able a couple different stations triangulated her uh, radio frequency they call it uh, DFing and they got lines of position on her and they were able to get an estimated location and they did they did finally were able to help her I don't know whether the guy lived or died but but position is the number one thing all right let me go as far as to say in today's world latitude and longitude is the most important in my video of the five most important settings I recommended that you get in your settings and move that latitude and longitude to the top of your screen if you can do that I still recommend that newer radios today also have it displayed on their um, on their screen but whatever know where it's at so if this happens you've already got it lined up so let's let's get let's get with the training again mayday 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 this is the motor vessel smiling irishman in position four one three one decimal seven three six north zero seven zero three six decimal zero zero west now <laughs> I said that nice and slow I, I think it was nice and clear somebody like me would be able to write that down and remember it's gonna be people like me who are gonna write the information down that you get be nice and slow concise and and here's another thing there is no rule that says that you only say it once. If I was in a Mayday situation, people would hear it at least twice. I recommend that, that, that you throw it out there. It's the most important piece of information you can get off your boat. The next thing is, I'm, this is a Sean Pollard uh, recommendation. I don't know that you're gonna find it anywhere, but I've been doing this for a long time, and I will tell you, if you are able to give your geographic location as well not instead of as well it'll do some good things for you like what well your good Samaritans aren't walking around with a pad and a piece of paper so they're not writing your latitude and longitude down when you throw it out there but if I was to say I you know I give my latitude and longitude and I say I am five miles due south of Muskegon Channel and some guy goes hey I'm at Muskegon Channel and he looks around and there's only three or four boats he knows that one of us is having a problem also your first responders it's going to take them a little while to get the latitude and longitude programmed in but if you give a geographical area they can just start heading right for that next and again number two to position is the number of people you have on board everybody's going to need to be accounted for you want everybody to be accounted for so the Coast Guard or your rescuers are going to need to know that number if you can get that off the boat that that's fantastic I think that's pretty self-explanatory the next one is the nature of distress and again this is going to uh, help the Coast Guard or the Rescue Coordination Center um, deploy the appropriate response. And your first responders that are en route to you, it's going to let them know what they're in for. A fire is completely different than a boat sinking. When, if you're sinking, the first responders get on, on scene, there might not be a boat. They might just be looking for people in the water so nature of your distress and then the last thing is your uh, description of your vessel and uh, <clears throat> I did a rescue one time in Buzzards Bay a sailboat was sinking and um, 
the description of the vessel was a white sailboat with white sails. We got to the end of Stony Point Dyke and looked over Buzzards Bay and there must have been 200 white sailboats with white sails. So if, if you're looking like everything else, you're going to want to have, have a way to distinguish. I mean, if you got smoke coming off your boat, that, that's probably good enough. But you, you may want to, when re your rescuers get closer to you and you're talking, you might want to have your flares ready to go. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's review. Position, number one most important piece of information. If you can give your geographic location, good things are going to happen for you. The number of people on board, nature of distress, and a description of your vessel. Now let's go over to the Rescue Coordination Center. These guys are on watch 24-7. They're highly trained. They don't do anything but this. They're not mowing grass or whatever, but these guys. Now, of course, with anything else, the longer they've been doing it, the, the more experience they have. But these guys are highly trained individuals, and they can get resources heading to you that nobody else can. <clears throat> so you want to get this information to them and, and help them get, get the job done. What they're going to do is they're going to... Uh, incorporate the information you've given them and put it into an urgent marine broadcast, which is also known as a pon pon. Pon pon is a step down from Mayday. If you hear a pon pon, somebody needs help. They're gonna give all the particulars that they can and the more information that you've given them, the more that they can put in this, in this broadcast. And they'll continue to broadcast this until um, some kind of resolution has happened. So, Rescue Coordination Center, uh, these guys do a great job. And, um, yeah. So, now let's talk about first responders. I guarantee you, the first responder, as soon as they hear those three words, Mayday, 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 they're going to have an adrenaline dump. They're going to be looking for their pad of paper and their pencil because after having watched this video, they know that you're going to be sending off your latitude and longitude and they want to get it down right. They're going to plug it into their plotter and, uh, and, and head your way. Now, who are your first responders? You have uh, obviously the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard Auxiliary and any other federal agency that, that might be operating in, in the area that you're in. You have the state police, environmental police, sheriff's office, regular police, uh, harbor masters, and uh, I want to make a, a shout out to some unsung heroes here. The commercial salvage guys. I, I was in when they, uh, they first started and there was a little war between us, but years later, these guys do a great job. They're, they're one of the first ones on scene and they are very capable uh, sailors. They, they have the gear to help you. They're, they're doing a good job. And that's tow boat and sea tow. Uh, and if, if there's another one that's local to you, uh, by all means, don't underestimate them. So they'll get on scene, evaluate the situation, and act accordingly. And then last is your uh, Good Samaritans. I just had a case uh, last summer with a, um, a lady who fell off a, a racing sailboat. All she had on was a swimsuit and her hat, slid right off the boat into the water, and uh, I was a little worried. Treading water for very long is a chore. But this good Samaritan came by, it was a set of grandparents, and uh, they had their two granddaughters on there. They picked her up, happy ending. Um, so, good Samaritans do an awful lot of rescues. And I challenge you, if you're out there and you're not the guy in the Mayday situation, help out where you can. Figure out what the Pon Pon is all about. Turn that radio on every now and then and listen to what's going on. Good Samaritans do a lot of work. If I were in a Mayday situation, and we're gonna tie the Good Samaritan into it, most Good Samaritans 
don't have their radios on. They're listening to their, jamming to their tunes or whatever. They're not gonna hear your broadcast. If it were me, as soon as I got done putting out the Mayday call, I would light off two Red Star flares, and I don't care if it's day or night. They, they see the flare go off, somebody sees it, hey, I think I just saw a flare. And inevitably, it's only one person, and uh, everybody's looking, and the flare's gone out by that time. And, uh, you know, now it comes in denial or whatever, and uh, if you send off the second flare, everybody's gonna be looking in that area, and, and you just solidify it. So. That's my, my deal. I don't know that you're going to find that anywhere, but if it were me, it would look like the 4th of July if I had enough flares. All right, that's it. That's the, the big picture view of a Mayday call. I think that uh, I covered all the bases pretty well. If there's something, we have been getting some fantastic comments, and I'm learning stuff, and I hope you, know, you, you look down and read a couple of them. Very, very good stuff. Um, if I didn't explain anything, like always, let me know and I will uh, answer your questions. We went over 900 subscribers and I can't tell you, man, I love you guys to death. My heart is overflowing with gratitude. Uh, I'm going to keep, keep on doing these videos and um, I'm just very grateful. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.